All right, so it's uh, Dr. Roost with Delta Chiropractic Center, and I had a question from a patient a week or so ago asking about um, reasonable exercise levels for people who are either hurting, so they can't do the exercise workout they used to do, or older people who uh, also can't do what they used to do, but want to work on it. And you know at Delta Chiropractic Center, we uh, recommend five components of exercise, uh, which include spine exercises, core stability, resistance, cardiac, and balance retraining. So it's five components that we should get into our weekly routine somehow. And I want to do a uh, quick Facebook Live video of each of those components. And one of the things I'd like to do as part of this is how do you get all five of those components in to a schedule that may be already pretty full? Well, one of the key pieces is that some exercises do uh, fit two or more components at once. So we'll try to touch on that as we do this uh, seasoned citizen exercise. So let's start with cardio because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm on an exercise bike, stationary bike. Personally, I like this best because I can read while I'm doing this. And I try to do 20 minutes of this. You want to set the resistance light, not heavy, so you're not beating up your knees. You want to do, uh, I do 20 minutes of it. One of the good things about going from this to resistance training is that you continue the cardio component even after you get off the bike because you're, you're already breathing heavy, your, body, your uh, heart's beating, and you continue that as you go through the resistance training. So I just did a couple minutes here. Uh, usually I'll do 20 minutes, and then I'll go to my resistance training. And I focus mostly, in my resistance training, I focus mostly on uh, upper body because I'm doing legs and lower body with the bike or in the summer when I run. But you can walk, you can rebound, you can walk stairs, whatever you enjoy. That gets your heart beating and your breath going. All right, so for resistance training, I will do a series of, uh, I think there's five or six components. Actually, I do uh, pull-ups because I've been working on this for a while, I can do some pull-ups. That may be a little bit uh, extreme for people who are just trying to get back into exercise. Other components that I do regularly include, um, uh, I'm gonna use light weights so that I give you the idea, but um, I wanna do use my shoulders and I wanna isolate shoulder uh, muscles. So I do a exercise where I'm going out, forward, down, forward, out, down and I'll do 15 reps no matter what exercise you're doing aim to get at least 15 reps of each one before you fatigue the muscle if you can't get 15 reps in um, uh, use lighter weights so you can do the full 15 reps also while I'm doing upper body work I will uh, work on the balance retraining by simply standing on one foot while I'm doing these upper body exercises and I alternate which leg I'm standing on through the full 15 reps of each one. All right, so there's the shoulder isolation exercise. Then there's simple curls, again, on one foot, so I'm using balance. While I'm doing this, after I've done my cardio, I'm still keeping my heart rate and breathing up, so I'm continuing the cardio component while I'm doing resistance training. Again, 15 reps. I like symmetry. Some people do one arm at a time. I don't like that. I like symmetry as much as possible. Next, I'll do a tricep exercise where I'm simply arms straight up and bringing the same weights. Again, I'll do it on one foot, so I'm working on balance retraining, 15 reps. Next, I do a shoulder shrug where I'm uh, leaning forward on one foot a little bit so I get my weights in front of me and I'm not hitting my hips, and I'm just doing this. This does bicep as well as shoulders, traps, lats. It's a good exercise. 15 reps and I will alternate which leg I have forward because I'm working at symmetry. Then uh, I will also do, uh, I, I actually do a bench press with um, dumbbells um, and I have the opportunity to use an old adjusting table so you can use a bench of some sort if you've got the equipment. If not, you can supplement or substitute with push-ups. Uh, push-ups are great combining a couple things. They're combining core stability with a with a plank uh, kind of posture and um, 
uh, and working the uh, triceps and the pecs. So I like push-ups a lot. All right, now you're going to do, again, at least 15 reps of push-ups. You can make these easier or you can make them harder in a couple different ways. If you're starting from a injured position and you got to ease into these things, do your push-ups on your knees. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see it. On your knees instead of on your toes. It takes a lot of the weight off. You want to ease it up a little even farther, do it against a wall so that you're just inclined. And to make it harder, you bring your feet out. The farther you bring your feet out, the more the incline, incline and the more you're working toward a full, full push-up. Um, so that's my resistance workout. Typically, I'll do two rounds of all that after I do my cardio. All right, now on alternate days, I will also do my core stability. And remember, through most of the resistance training, I'm working on balance retraining because I'm doing one foot. So that's um, cardio, resistance, a little bit of core with the push-ups, and balance retraining. Uh, let me touch on your spinal exercises. Those are very specific based on, at our office, based on what we see in your exam and x-rays. They're very specific for each patient. Uh, if you see a chiropractor already, ask them for exercises to work on stabilizing your spine so that you don't you do a better job of holding your corrections. All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, core stability, and I'm a big fan of planks. Planks are crucial and uh, much better than sit-ups, leg lifts, crunches. Don't do sit-ups, crunches, or leg lifts. They're bad for your back. Even the military is catching on. They're not doing that as, as strong anymore. All right, so planks, and I already did a video on planks. Uh, I'll give you the link to that when we do this, when, I, when we post this, but uh, planks are crucial. There's a lot of them you can do. You can, I, in that video, I put a, a way to amplify them or uh, step them up to more difficulty, but let's try going the other direction. As you're easing into a new workout, either from injury or if you're older and are just trying to get back into some exercises, Planks can be done. You don't need any equipment. I use a pad just to save my knees and elbows a little bit, but you can do them on the floor, on the bed if you want. All right, so planks are, um, you're going to do front planks, side planks, and back planks. Uh, let's start with front planks. One of them, which combines balance, uh, spinal stability, and core stability, is the bird dog, where you bring, let me see, I'm still a little close there. Let's bring this out working around the grandkids play, play area here too. So anyway, bird dog, one arm and the opposite leg. Hold it 10 seconds. If you want to take it up a notch, I'll add motion with my foot and arm. And then make sure your symmetry, you do the other side as well. That's bird dog, very good for core stability. And it's an easy one to ease into. Another front plank is elbows and toes. And again, if you want to go a little easier, start on your knees. The goal is to have your body straight. I see I got an angle there. If I'm up on my toes, I'm a little more straight. But start on your toe or your knees. Uh, go to 10 seconds. Try to work up to 30 seconds. Don't go any more than 30 seconds. You can do more repetitions, uh, but start aim for 30 seconds. If you get that good, look at my other video on planks. There's some ways to make them more difficult and challenging and interesting. Side planks. You're on your elbow and preferably your ankles. But if you can't tolerate that, either because your shoulder hurts or your hips can't tolerate it, go to your knees. You're going to bend your knees and just go up on your knees so you're straight through your torso here. Hold it for 10 seconds. If you can tolerate that, work up to 30 seconds. If you can tolerate that, go up on your ankles. That's side planks. Back planks. Um, there's one that's pretty easy where you are laying on your back, knees bent. It's called the glute bridge. Uh, put your hands down for s stability and bring your hips up. You hold it 10 seconds, work up to 30 seconds. On my planks video, there's ways to move that up to much, much more difficult. All right, so that's the basics. Did we touch all of them? Um, cardio, resistance, balance retraining, standing on one foot. Practice that and work up to more times. Again, we've got a... a uh, um, a sequence of balance retraining. If you want that, ask us at the office. It's called the, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but ask at the office for the balance retraining uh, information. Uh, let's see, core stability is planks, spinal stability, ask your chiropractor for specific exercises. And I think we covered it all. So 
if you're getting back into exercise, there's ways to start gently, gradually work up. The key is be consistent. Do something every day. Uh, cardio, I recommend at least 20 minutes to get your heart going. You can continue that with your resistance training to get it up to about 30 minutes. Um, I alternate resistance training and planks or core stability every other day. Um, so you're not doing one thing all the time. All right, I think that's a good bit of information to start with. Uh, if you have questions, let us know. Delta Chiropractic Center, we're there to help you get better and stay better. Uh, we're happy to do that. If you want us to be on your team as a health coach, uh, spine coach, let us know. We, uh, we're happy to be part of your team. So thanks. God bless you. We'll see you down the trail. Thank <laughs> you.